Now you're going to play with people like Angel, Haley, yeah. Kateri. Just the, the list goes on and on and on. How do you think that all you guys are going to play together? I feel like we're going to play great together, honestly. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of people talk about like egos and whatever it might be, the personalities. But at the end of the day, if it comes down to me getting 20 rebounds a game and not scoring a point, that's, that's what I'll do for my team to win. Because at the end of the day, that's all I want to do is win. Presented by State Farm. Welcome back to Sometimes I Hoop. I'm your host, Haley Jones, living the rookie life for the Atlanta Dream, coming off all-star break. And this week, I'm joined by a certified bucket. She averaged a double-double last year at DePaul, ranked fourth in points in the NCAA, Chi-Town's finest and hottest news coming out of the transfer portal, none other than LSU's newest Tiger, Anissa Morrow. Thanks for hopping on the pod. Of course. Thank you. Thank y'all for having me. Oh, yeah, of course. But let's jump right into it. LSU, go Tigers. It has, no, been, it has been a couple months since you announced, but what led you to making that decision and to wanting to transfer? Um, I would say that I had a great season at DePaul from mm -hmm. you listing my accolades and what I did, but I didn't want to have empty seasons. I felt like I kept falling short from my biggest goals and that's to win the national championship. And for me, I know how it feels to score 45 points or get 27 mm -hmm. rebounds. So I want my hard work to be backed up. And I knew that I had to make a different decision. And that was to go into the portal. Not making it to the tournament is is hard, I bet. And, you know, it's part of college basketball. Everybody wants to make March Madness and go deep and have that run. And, you know, LSU coming off a of natty, that seems like the mm -hmm. place to go if you want to do all that. But so you narrowed your choices to LSU, South Carolina and USC. So yeah. what about each of those schools was kind of attracting you because each school has a different thing. You know, USC is on the rise. They're rebuilding with coach Lindsay and then South Carolina, they're kind of entering a new era with that freshman class leaving of Aaliyah and everyone like that. And LSU is coming off a hot streak. So mm -hmm. what was it about those three? Um, I've had 30, I had 35 options to pick from. It was kind oh, of, wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that's hefty. That's a lot. <laughs> It was a bit overwhelming, but I just knew, like, I wanted to come to a school where I would be able to, of course, showcase my game, but at the highest level. And I mm -hmm. felt like those three schools for me would be the best options for my style of play. 100%. I mean, 35 to 3, you did that in a quick time, really narrowing down your options. But, I mean, you made the whole process of choosing a little bit suspense suspenseful. I'm sure for those schools, but also from the outside, like, trying to, you know, where is she going to go? This is on the yeah. top of the portal right now. But it was really fun to watch that play out on social media. So is that part of the plan to make people wait, have that suspense, or did that just kind of come about? I feel like it was a process. Like with me, I didn't have a big following. A lot of people didn't know my name. Um, and I wanted to enjoy my process. Like a lot of people were saying that I was prolonging it, like just dragging it out. But I was like, it's important for me to enjoy this because it's an opportunity that you only get once in a lifetime. So I wanted to enjoy it to the fullest. And I felt like <laughs> dragging it or just taking my time with it was the best way for me to enjoy it. Nah, I, I mean, I got you. I, I was the same way out of high school. I think I was literally the last person in my class to commit because I was like, I just don't know. And it's such a big decision, right? Like it's everything. It's not just basketball at that point. It's school. It's the people you're around, the experiences you're going to have. So props to you for dragging it out and not speeding yourself Thanks. up. So chose LSU. You have a lot of heavy hitters when you look on paper, but at the same time, I'm not, I mean, I know Haley very well. She's a worker. And yeah. getting you no know, Flage and Angel, like y'all finna work. So having that culture that I know is gonna remain with Miss Kim, it's not gonna change heading into the next season, even after a natty, which will be really exciting, I'm sure, for you to join. Yeah, of course. I'm super excited to join. I just know how hard I work. Like every day, mm -hmm. my stats showed that I was very consistent every game. I averaged a double double last year at DePaul and the year before with being national freshman of the year. So I try to stay as consistent as I possibly can, but I also want to be challenged by my teammates and my coach and staff. I want them to have my back. And I felt like LSU was the best fit for, for that.
Let's talk about last season quickly and what next season could look like. It's just going to be a different landscape in the game. Yeah. But so you're heading to the SEC from the Big East, which I feel like is a very big change in terms of styles of play. Mm-hmm. So what teams or players are you most looking forward to competing against? Um, I would definitely say I'm looking forward to play South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always watched South Carolina since I was – a little girl, I would say in eighth grade. I mean, in my um freshman year or se- to senior year, like I will always watch them. Um, so I would say that's really the only thing that I'm really, really looking forward to. Um, mm-hmm. I would say Mississippi State because one of my tra- um teammates transferred and went to okay. Mississippi State. So just seeing the matchup and seeing how we'll play against each other since we played like all of our college career mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. So. And I feel like you fit the SEC with your style of play. Like you're going to get the boards and play physical and this and that. So I'm I'm really excited to watch you match up against these people and really show them like, hey, now, just because I was at DePaul or the Big East doesn't mean I can't still hoop on this big stage, which I think, yeah, I, which would be really fun. Yeah. I feel like I always play with like a chip on my shoulder. Mm-hmm. Like, being from the South Side of Chicago and being from Simeon, I've always had a, a chip on my shoulder since I was younger. And I feel like sometimes like I've always been slept on. Mm-hmm. And you can only sleep on somebody for so long. And I know that I've been working. I know that I've been putting in the work. So being at the biggest stage that I possibly can to display my talent is all that I really want to do. I'm a big fan. Big fan <laughs> of these answers right here. Okay. So coming off the year last year, there was so much buzz around last year's tournament, the season as a whole, and then LSU's championship run, right? Storylines that came from that. Angel and Flage taken off from that right it was really amazing to see but how do you think that increased coverage of women's basketball will continue to grow into this season do you feel like there's a new area of growth whether that be coverage or NIL or this and that when it comes to covering women's basketball this upcoming year I feel like it's gonna be crazy Mm -hmm. actually Mm -hmm. Um, just seeing everything that's been happening throughout the summer from like the national championship to also NIL, I feel mm-hmm. like it opens up so many opportunities for young women to just express themselves and be able to do deals or have endorsements with things that they love and that they've always been doing since they were younger, but actually getting paid for it, actually being able to display it and put that that media coverage out there. Um, another thing that I would say is like even deals that Angel have done or, or Fla J, like it's with rappers or different brands and everything. Mm-hmm. And it's just bringing attention to women's basketball. And that's exactly what we need um, for the media coverage and for the fan base to grow. No, I, I completely agree with you. I think, um, you know, Angel and Fla J really being on the forefront after that national championship, everything that they've done, they've done it in a way that all ties back to women's basketball, right? Like they're pubbing themselves and growing their own brands, but they keep that same message of talking about women's basketball, but women's sports, you know, we've been like this, keep watching this and that. So Mm -hmm. I think that they're people in the NIL space are really doing it the right way. Um, which is really like now that I'm graduated, now I don't get to do NIL anymore. It's really fun to see that like that torch is being carried. Yeah. Okay. And then in terms of you're leaving the Big East, you're now in the SEC, right? New conference. We always have this debate about the best conference across the country. (laughs) Last last year, I've always been biased towards the Pac-12. Now that I'm out of it, I still have that tie where I'm like, okay, like Utah is kind of going to go crazy again. But then you think about y'all, LSU, South Carolina, Mississippi State, right? The list goes on in the, in the SEC. But then, shoot, like, I feel like I personally, I'd be sleeping on the Big Ten. I don't know if I would say that they're the best conference, but mm-hmm. I know I'd be sleeping on the Big Ten. But what would be your take as to best conference ranking them? Um, I would say SEC first. I do Quick answer. Feel, Quick I feel, answer. I feel like I sleep on the Big Ten a little bit as well. Uh huh. Um, I would say they have great talent. I remember playing against Maryland. Mm-hmm. Great talent there. Um, that was a tough game. Um, honestly, the Big East for me, I love the Big East. Um, mm-hmm. I had fun playing in the Big East. I'm sure um, you did. You were you were killing. I, I bet you had playing. a blast. Yeah, I love playing against UConn. Those are like great games mm-hmm. win lose or draw like well we always lost but um <laughs> <laughs> it was fun it was fun, it was it was fun. i like okay. yeah i like how competitive like the games always were and then like yeah. all the attention around the games like those were our most packed games throughout the throughout the season so i really mm-hmm. enjoyed those games i would say the pack 12 is is tough as well i do mm-hmm. feel like they're they're kind of slept on too 
Mm-hmm. Uh, thank yeah. you thank you <laughs> i do feel like that kind of slept on i've uh-huh. watched a lot of games and i was surprised by a lot of teams actually mm-hmm. but i would say the best conference is sec all right i respect it i think this season especially there's a lot of talent in the sec yeah you often have your hands full at night in and night out right yes. <laughs> um so I, I'm, I'm excited to watch you guys You come from a high school of big names, right? D. Rose, Jabari Parker, Kendrick Nunn, the list goes on and on and on. So for you going to a school that's known for producing hoopers, what was the atmosphere like for games? Did you know that there was an expectation of greatness when you went to that school? What was your mindset kind of entering that first season there? Well, with me, I'm going to go back to like seventh and eighth grade when my brother was still playing there. Mm -hmm. Like, the atmosphere was crazy. Like you could be standing outside and you don't get in and you pay for your ticket. Like the games are always packed. Like the energy Mm -hmm. around Simeon was crazy. Yeah. So I knew going in there, it was going to be like that, but on the women's end of it, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And for me, I just wanted to make a change and show like the school in the city. Like there's a lot of stars that came out of Simeon on the men's side of things, but there can also be stars come out of Simeon from the woman's side of things as well. Mm-hmm. And my goal was to come in here and do the best that I possibly could. And it turned out to winning two city championships in the first ever state championship mm-hmm. as well. But it just shows you like when you have goals and you work towards them that you can accomplish whatever you have in mind. Yeah, I mean, that's facts. You literally trailblazed for the women program there now. Because I'm sure that even since you left, they're still getting that same hype because yeah. girls see what you've done and they're like, okay, I want to carry that torch. I want to yeah. continue to do this and that, which is really special. Yeah. So freshman year, you helped your team win their first city championship, right? Then you get a Nike commercial, which is crazy, which is awesome. And so how did that come about? How was that experience? I'm sure winning the first city championship was insane energy around that. So what was that like? Honestly, for me, it was really fun. But mm-hmm. I will also, also say like, I felt like it was a lot put on my plate like mm-hmm. as a freshman. So yeah. when I came in and I was making a lot of noise as a freshman, I did have a lot of doubts because I'm like, why is why do I have to do all this stuff and I'm just a freshman? So I guess like I was the captain for the team as like in everything. As a freshman? Yeah. You like 14? Yeah. Oh my God. And I just learned so much, but I kind of felt like it was because of my work ethic. Like mm-hmm. it was really like I led by example, but I was never really verbal. Like I never really talked too much, but every day you knew you were going to get a double double or something out of me. So mm-hmm. That was just a goal for me. My mother was my coach um, in high school as well. So mm-hmm. we kind of bumped heads a little bit and she would kind of like back off and like, I understand and stuff, but she were, she was always like, she wanted me to be better. So every day, like, do you want to get in the gym or do you need to do extra workouts and stuff like that of that sort? So it was, I felt like when I was younger, it was a lot put on my plate, but now when I came into college, it was like, I was prepared for everything. And then you choose DePaul. Why DePaul? What made you choose DePaul? I would say the winning tradition there. Um, Mm -hmm. Also, it being close to home, because honestly, coming out of high school, I wasn't ready to go off to school. Mm -hmm. And I felt like DePaul was the closest school to home, the the, um, tradition that they had there of winning. Um, Coach Bruno recruited me since I was in like ninth grade. Um, He also recruited my mother. So it was like that history that they had. Everything Mm kind of just flowed. Like Mm -hmm. I rolled up my sleeves every day in practice to be better. Freshman year, offense did not run through me. I literally got every rebound that I possibly could to score. (laughs) Okay. And that was like (laughs) how I knew that I was going to score every game. I said, if I get 10 rebounds, I'm guaranteed to almost get 20 points if I make every every layup. So I said, it's given if I get a double-double. Or if I get 10 rebounds that I'm going to score the ball. That's why I said if I go when I go to LSU and if I don't even get a touch, I'm going to get a rebound. Mm-hmm. So it's a guarantee that I will score. So from there, I kind of just let my game grow. I knew that I could rebound. I knew that I could post well. I knew that I finished around the basket. And I would say my sophomore year, I would say that offense went through me. And I feel like I still set the goal as high as I possibly could. 
Um, Cause sometimes like offense going through, you then have to go on defense and defend and do all of it. Like <laughs> it kind of got a little overwhelmed and then I'm like, Oh my God. Like, But I knew that I had to push through it because I knew the goal that I wanted to win at the end of the day. See, I'm loving your answer so far. Like <laughs> everything that you, that you've said is just such an amazing outlook to have. You're like, I'm going to go get me a bucket. Even if I'm not touching the ball, I'm going to find a way to impact the game in any which way that I can, right? Yeah. Which is insane. You're like, oh, if I get 10 rebounds, I'm going to get a 20 ball. Boom. Easy. Yeah. 20 ball plus double double. Throw in some and ones, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. It's light work. So to bring that to LSU with the workers that they already have and the <laughs> talent that they already have is going to be something really special. Yeah. You talked a little bit about the way that you were scoring freshman to sophomore year, the difference. Did you have certain things that you're now focusing on this summer to bring to LSU? Yeah, after my freshman year, I knew that it was so hard just battling down there all the time, like Mm -hmm. getting beat up. And it's taxing. It gets you tired. Yes, like I'm only six feet and I'm playing against girls that are six, five, six, eight, and Mm -hmm. I'm not really a post. So I was playing like out of my position the whole time. And honestly, I was tired of getting beat up, like, I, I mean, every game. Very so I was like, Yeah, so I was like, I need to work on my shot. I need to work off, like, taking my opponent off the bounce. Um, Throughout the summer, I was in the best shape possible, like, in amazing shape. And I ended up getting hurt. This is what a lot of people don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, Throughout the summer, before going into my sophomore year, I ended up tearing my lateral meniscus. And I played the whole season on it because I never, like, got surgery because I was tired of getting surgery. It's like, I'm like, I'm getting surgery after surgery after surgery. And that would have been my fourth one. So I just fought through it. And I did a lot of recovery and Mm -hmm. a lot of stretching, a lot of strengthening, a lot of PT. And I said, I just have to take my time with this. But it was really, like, a mental – It it like, it – was really mental and I pushed through it yeah I pushed through it and um I was able to overcome it but I just felt like that on top of doing everything that I did my sophomore year like I played injured the whole year and it's just like what you did yeah Mm -hmm. and like for me sometimes like I look back on it like wow like because you know like I feel like a lot of people only get to see what you do on the court Mm -hmm. and if you don't share like people don't know because they only know what you share Mm -hmm. but it taught me a lot like if I could get through that then I could get through anything and that's what made my work ethic go up 10 times more than what it was my freshman year to my sophomore year like I knew that I had goals and coming in my sophomore year I knew that I needed to develop different ways to score like I said I was tired of getting beat up around the basket all the time Mm -hmm. but I'm like I am a a mismatch for anybody that plays me because I'm a, I'm a taller guard if I play in a guard position and I'm undersized if I play as a center. So some, and the way that I play, it's hard to block my shots. Um, So I just wanted to develop my game as much as I can. Like, and now on the off season, I've been working on my guard skills with dribbling, coming mm-hmm. off the bounds, snatch bags, mm-hmm. stuff, everything of that sort. Just trying to grow my game every day. Heading into our last little segment here, it's going to be called our vibe check, and it's rapid fire answers. Rapid fire is a loose term. It's as quickly as you can answer them, as much pace as you can, because we've had some guests who aren't the quickest, but, Uh you know, I believe in you. We've been doing great so far. (laughs) So, started with the draft. Who was best dressed at the draft? Um, Zyakic. Daring! Okay. What's the drill you never want to see on the practice plan? Um, ladders. Facts. Okay. Game winning shot or game winning block? Game winning block. Ooh, I think that's our first. I think yeah. that's our first one, but that's, that's, that's slept on. Okay. Off the court, go to sneaker. Uh, Air Force One. Nice. And one or three pointer. And one. Easy. But that's an easy answer for me. <laughs> okay. Toughest place to play. For me so far, UConn. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have a go to trash talk line? Oh, uh, no. No. I don't really trash talk. That's I'm not much of a talker. Yeah, I'm not really much of a talker. I feel like the time you talking, I'm just going to give you a bucket on the other end. Love it. <laughs> okay. Who's your goat? Um, I would say my mother, actually. Oh. That's my, yeah. 
Great answer. <laughs> Great answer. Okay. School with the best facilities. LSU. Okay. And what's your biggest basketball ick? Oh, that's going to be long. Oh, okay. Give us a few. What are your icks? Um, Hot takes. I would say when socks is too long, like, mm. I don't like when the socks are too long. Mine be a little up there, but not like all the way up there. You can't have them stretched. Um, yeah. That don't look good. Now I don't I don't like long shorts. Like you gotta tuck them. Okay, those are definitely up there for me. The one yeah. I would add is I hate flopping. I can't do it. That I'm just like, what <laughs> I are can we never doing? I could yeah, flopping be but I'll be trying to take charges and I don't be flopping, but I never get it. Like, yeah, like if you like you can embellish, but yeah. just but just oh, don't, yeah, <laughs> out of uh, control, out of control, flopping, out of control, flopping. No, yeah, it's like we are grown women. <laughs> what yeah. do you look like? What are we doing? Exactly. <laughs> but this has been wonderful. I've appreciated every moment of your time, and thank you, everyone, for listening. Sometimes I hope we'll continue bringing you the latest in women's hoops from College of WBA. Anissa, thank you again. You've been wonderful. Of course, thank you all for having me. I really enjoyed it.